Good morning, my name's Ian Limmer and uh, I've worked for Peter Beals Roses now for 45 years. I have been to 44 Chelsea's and over that period of time we have got 26 gold medals. I started here as a Saturday boy, it wasn't really something that I wanted to do, I wanted to be uh, a mechanic or go into the Navy, that sort of thing, but um, I uh, was offered the Saturday job and within two months I was asked would I like to go to Chelsea Flower Show and, uh, by Peter and um, that was absolutely fantastic to the opportunity to be able to go you know, to a, a, sh a show as big as that. So uh, that's how I sort of got started here. Uh, I started when there was only four of us, which was Peter, myself, the secretary and the old boy, the pensioner. Now it's, I'm the old boy as, as, as the pensioner, so to speak. So we've, we've got about 50 people here full and part time at the nursery. It's now my job and role uh, to take over where Peter uh, left off. And in, I now have the responsibility of adding new varieties into the catalogue and um, going to places all around the world, you know, to add uh, new contacts and so on. We've got some wonderful gardens here and please do come and visit us during the height of June and July when the roses are all out and the herbaceous perennials. Um, it's a lovely place to visit. At the moment, nothing is out in flower, but just as I came here and we're setting up the, the, the camera, just behind me I did see, I don't know if you can see it, but it's the first flower that we've got coming in, in, into bloom on the nursery. And this is canary bird. Normally that should be in flower probably around uh, April the 10th or 11th, but here we are in May and it's only just now flowering. So everything is so far behind at the moment. Okay, so um, we've had a bit of wind damage, frost damage, but I can see now everything is beginning to move and we're gonna come to exciting times when all the roses will be in bloom in, as I say, end of, mid to end of June. In the gardens we have many structures and we've got uh, what we call the St Albans Walk. It's absolutely wonderful in the height of the summer. We have about 70 uprights, so we can have 70 climbers, ramblers going over it and in the height of June and July it's absolutely amazing. At the front of them we've got uh, two later flowering varieties, one which is mini ha ha and that comes out around end of June and all through into July and that when the other ones are then going over, that gives you impact right at the front. In the gardens here, we've got this lovely observation turret and we had that at Chelsea in 2008. It was such a big structure and feature. It, it went from one end of the stand to the other. Absolutely amazing. And then when we finished with it at Chelsea, we retired it off into the gardens here. So in 2009, we put the structure up and it's absolutely gorgeous. And we've got some wonderful climbers and ramblers going over it. Fantastic feature for the summer. Premium. So here we are in Peter's Memorial Garden and we've got four lovely beds of Peter's favorite roses. This one here is Great Maiden's Blush. It's an alba that dates back to the 15th century and um, flowers for about five weeks, but when it flowers, it's absolutely amazing and makes a wonderful shrub rose. Peter first was aware of this when he was about seven and he loved the scent of it. And um, so this, uh, you know, got us Peter Beale's roses. What we're now going to do is dress this obelisk as though we would do it at Chelsea Flower Show. We're doing it in the marquee at the moment because it's a bit of a dull day, quite windy, so um, apologies that we're not in the wonderful garden. So at Chelsea Flower Show, we have arches and obelisks. All the arches and the obelisks are made by classic garden elements. They're sturdy, strong, and they can take lots of plants onto the obelisk. On the obelisk, we'd probably have about 20 to 30 plants to dress this, but if you're going to do it in the garden at home, this obelisk here, you just have one. So I'm now going to start, and the variety that we're going to be putting on here is climbing Cecil Brunner. It's quite a vigorous rose, but it will take a, an obelisk this size. Beautiful rose, nice fragrance, and um, it flowering from the base all the way up to the top. So it just is perfect for what we want to do here. So. I'm now going to start. Normally this might take three or four hours, but we haven't got all that time this morning. So um, I'm going to do this fairly quickly. So if you excuse the roughness, what we look, try to look for is making sure that it's facing, facing the right way. Take the canes out. We, we can't take the canes out to start with because they will 
all collapse. So we make sure it's sort of facing the right way and then we start by tying on at the top there with the wire. So it'll stay, stay in place up there like that. To hold it on at the bottom, we use cable ties. Everything on our stand is held on by electricians' cable ties. Fantastic. And you put them around any feet, any structure on the stand, it will hold it right into place, what we want to do, okay? So it holds like that, and then you, then you just uh, clip it through there and put the pot into there. So that works very well. So I thought I'd just show you that. I'll carry on now. And what we don't want to do is to cover the actual, all the feature at the top there with the, with the um, uh, obelisk finial on the top. So I'm just holding it again with that wire, holding it into place. And then probably just wrap that round there and hold that into there. So we're now beginning to get to cover the obelisk nicely. Like I said, it does normally take quite, quite some time to get the actual detail and facing the flowers in the right direction. And then you just tweak. Normally on the stand, we will have about 1300 plants to dress and it takes about eight people, six days to dress the whole stand. So you see there's a loose stem there. Just gonna tie that into there like that. Then we normally, we work in teams of two. So one will dress it and the other one will help pass things through and then stand back so you, you can see whether you've got it in the right place or not. I haven't stood back yet, but I'm hoping that looks just about okay. So then you'd, you'd go round here, round the back and so on. Then once you've dressed it with the main rows, then what we come, come to is bringing it down to the edge. For that, for various different heights, to get the step right, we have uh, plastic pots and then they come down to on the floor. So we sort of stagger, stagger the height of what we want. I'm now going to use this rose here. This one is Pearl of St. Luke's. Wonderful fragrance, grows to about three foot tall. Absolutely amazing, lovely sweet fragrant rose. One of ours that we introduced about a couple of years ago. So we just work it in there like that. Here's another pot. There we go. So that you can see you've got um, a blend of nice, uh, different types of, 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 of size of the flower, but also different, um, uh, different shades of the pink. You know, I think if you'd, you know, maybe, you know, you, you put that there, it wouldn't quite work so well. So, hopefully. Okay, so that one's there. We've now got another one of ours that we introduced um, 1998, Macmillan Nurse. Wonderful, wonderful rose. Grows to about a meter in height and continuously flowering, lots of clusters on the end of a stem, perfect for any border or even growing into a pot. So as you can see, hopefully we've got this staggered effect coming down. There like that. I see I've got a little bit of a gap there, so I'm gonna use a pot just to try and see if it's the right Right rows to go into there. Same sort of, nope, that's gonna to be too tall. So what I'd normally do would either get a smaller pot, which I haven't got with me at the moment, and put it there. Because if you can see that now, it's just, I think, just that little bit low. It just needs to come up so it flows nicely right to the edging board at the front there. 
So there we are. Hopefully, it's given you a little insight to what we do at Chelsea on the obelisks. Same sort of thing on the arches. And um, if you could only be here now and smell the scent, it's absolutely gorgeous. What I thought I'd like to do is just to show you um, a rose going into a pot and put it on an obelisk so that you can take a little bit of what we do at Chelsea away with you at home. So what you need is a good sized pot here and this will be about a 60 litre pot to 80 litres. And to start with, you need to have drainage at the bottom so a broken clay pot was fine so that uh, the compost that you put on top of it still lets the water drain away. What you want is a soil based compost and then you're away. When you put a rose in a pot, you know, a lot of people think, okay, rose in a pot, cover it up and done. Yes, it does look very nice, especially when you've got it on a patio. But what I want to do is to sh just to show you outside the box a little bit, a little bit of what we've done on the, uh, you know, at Chelsea stand there. So, what we're going to do is we're going to plant Nozomi. This one here has taken off the container beds and um, it's a little bit behind at the moment because of the cold weather but I don't know if you can see the tall, the shoots here, by about another four weeks, that's gonna be up to that height. By the end of the summer, it'll be up to about that height. So we're not gonna use this one because I've got one prepared earlier. This one is about a two year old plant, okay? So we're gonna put this in. Let's take it out of the pot. That will help. Tease the pot a little bit, get the fibrous roots out. Get it in there like that. Take it off the, the cane. So this variety is called Nozomi. It's a ground cover rose, okay? So the one that I put in the pot first was a shrub rose that grows to about a meter in height. This is a ground cover. This is only a two year old plant. So you, do, you, you, know, you will be able to get this within a couple of three years in your pot. This is the obelisk. Let's take the cane out. But already, can you see, let's think outside the box again. You know, if you've, if you've got a wall, look at that, just cascading down on the wall. That would be absolutely fantastic. But for this purposes, I'm gonna put it through this obelisk here. Get it through there. I don't know if you can see all the tiny little buds on there. In about another 10 days, this is just gonna be a mass of flowers and uh, little small pink flowers, tough as anything. Really good rose. Right. Like everything, when you want to do something quickly, it doesn't quite work. There we go. We're getting down. We're getting down now. Right. Okay, so. And the reason why we put some of the uh, ground cover roses in, as you can see, look how pliable the stems are. So let's get that unknotted from, from here. Okay, obelisk in. Just secure that down a bit more. Put some compost in. When you're putting uh, plants or roses in, into, uh, into pots. You can also put bulbs in as well. Uh, bedding plants, that sort of thing, just to give you extra, extra flowering throughout the spring and into the summer. Okay. Okay, so we've got that there like that. And what I'm now going to do is to twist this round onto the obelisk like that. As you can see, the, or, already there's, it, it's beginning to fill the obelisk there. There we go, there. And for obelisks in this sort of pot, you can get them from any garden center and they, they range from anything like this, which is about just under a meter height in height to anything up to, you know, about two meters, that sort of thing. Let's try and get this round for the camera so that you can see a little bit what I'm trying to do. Haven't had to tie it in on. Let's just tie that on there so it doesn't come off. Don't tie it too tight. There we are, tie that one in round there, that one on in there. 
This plant was grown in our Chelsea, at our Chelsea site a few miles away and um, it was grown on a cane and if the flowers are not in the right direction don't worry about it within about two weeks they will naturally go up towards the light and then they will flower all the way around the rim for looking after this pot during the summer months it's quite easy really um, all you need to do is just to make sure that you keep it nice and moist you can't overwater uh, roses in pots you imagine if it's going to go onto a patio, the patio is going to warm up. We've got a clay pot that's going to warm up, so it's going to need lots of water. Don't just rely on the rain. Feeding, um, liquid feed, tomato feed is very good uh, for roses, so that's great. And for pruning and tidying up, all you need to do is just to have the roses wrapped around the, the obelisk here, and then just almost with a, a pair of shears or little small snips, just trim and tidy up. No outward facing bud worried to worry about, just tidy it up so that you can see maybe through the obelisk and so on. Ever so easy to look after. I'm just about happy with that and I hope that just gives you a little bit of something to take away from what we do at Chelsea Flower Show and really looking forward to seeing you all in Chelsea in hopefully 2022.